This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. We're at the press conference here for Kelbrook and Errol Spence, May 27th here in Sheffield. We're joined by Derek James, <laughs> who uh, livened up the press conference today. It was quite boring before you started talking, if I'm being honest. Well, think about this. I didn't do it, they did it. Because if you think about it, he said something about a Twinkie or... Uh, chocolate brownie. Chocolate brownie. His trainer starts taking other little shots. So I came back and, and put a reality. Stop talking about your loss. You didn't win. We're not giving consolation prizes for that victory. I mean, oh, excuse me. See, that's how they talk about it, like they won, that loss. Stop talking about it. You lost. That's all I'm saying. We're not going to pat you on the back. Oh, way to go. You made $5 million. Don't pat you on the back for that. Are you serious? So, specifically, it was the over-talking about Golovkin in the press conference that seemed to be an issue there? Well, it wasn't an issue. It was just the fact is that you have 36 other victories. Why talk about the one loss? And that's the one that you think made your career great. No. That was those 36 other fighters that you fought. That one that you lost, so you can lose that up in the shuffle of those other 36. All I'm saying is, listen, there are no white ribbons or consolation prizes in boxing. I'm not going to pat you on the back for a loss, taking a challenge. What that fight did with Golovkin, because I'm going to tell you, as a fighter, you look at a, a bigger guy, you say, I can beat him. He's slower than me. I'm faster than he is. I can beat him. What he learned in the Golovkin fight is he's not as good as he thought he was. Because you don't fight a bigger, stronger guy if you think you're going to lose to him, right? You fight a bigger, stronger guy because you think you're faster than he is, you think you're more intelligent than he is, and you think you're better boxing than he is. That big, slow guy with those slow feet, slow hands, he, he can't judge distance or range because he was really up close to missing him. That big, slow guy caught you and beat you. So what you learned in that fight was that you're not as good a fighter as you thought you were, and you may say everything else to the world, but you know that you lost to that guy. And then you saw that guy fight Danny Jacobs, and that guy looked just average when he couldn't land a big shot. So as I stated before, you learn how good you were not. So you better come down to 147, because you can't probably deal with the 154-pounders either. Also in that press conference, it was brought up about the, the best opponents that each fighter had fought um, yeah. from your side. You know, you said it was Algeria. From their side, it was, it was in a winning fight it was Sean Porter. Yeah. Um, it, it was also argued that who would win out of a fight between those two. Uh, but it is quite all irrelevant because what really matters is what happens between Errol and Kel. Sure. So, um, like I said, is that you seem to have sort of done a little bit of well, quite a lot of round. Uh, collecting and uh, knowing your stuff about Kel's opponents and yeah. their winning and losing yeah. records. Um, is that something you do uh, for other well, opponents? Know, I just, it, it was something that somebody sent me that, that there were facts about the fights, more all about facts. And Sean Porter and Chris Algeria are two insignificant situation issues. I never mentioned Sean Porter. I didn't even mention Chris Algeria. But I said that I told Chris Algeria that Errol Spence is the best fighter you ever fought against, and he had just fought against Amir Khan, and he had just fought against Manny Pacquiao. And I told him the exact same thing. Errol Spence is the best fighter you've ever fought against, and you just fought against Triple G, and you just fought against Sean Porter. So what? The, what? Do, my my visions are my guy. I'm definitely very positive about my guy. I believe in my guy. I know his skill set. I know his intelligence. And so I say that this guy is the best guy that he's ever fought. And he just fought Triple G. We've seen, obviously, a bit more of Kel Brook, uh, but we've seen some great performances over the, the last year or so of Errol Spence, where he's really sort of jumped onto the scene and uh, stopping the likes of you know, Algerian, Leonard Bundu. Uh, how good is Errol Spence, in your opinion? Well, this is the thing about it. We, we see how good Errol Spence is every day because we spot bigger guys who can take it, right? So the world likes what they see or maybe they don't like what they see. But the reality of it is the, you only see how good Errol Spence is by the level of opposition that can take his onslaught, who can take his power, who can take his intelligence. That's the difference. So if Kel Brook 
can take it, you'll see how good Errol Spence is. Because he's going to have to do something and something and something else to win the fight. So we don't know. If he comes in and knocks Kell Brook out in five, maybe within the five rounds, you say, well, maybe possibly it was something that he did. But if this guy pushes back and makes Errol do something different, that's when you'll start seeing just how good he really is. That's the truth. Are we going to see yourself and uh, Dominic Ingle on the undercard, Derek? You know what? We, well, we can't be on the undercard because it's like, the, <laughs> you know, we'll be too exhausted to go train fighters and coach fighters. You know, but uh, I don't, I mean, it's like this. They said some stuff first. That's what you got to react. That's what you got to understand. If you go back and look at it, they were talking about what he did and who he had fought and this and that. So I touched the guy from Sky Sports and said, listen, I want to rebut that. They kept talking, everybody kept talking about Triple G, Triple G, Triple G. But now you notice nobody's talking about Triple G fight anymore. Because you know why? It's insignificant. You cannot give a guy a A plus for losing. It doesn't happen. That's all I'm saying. And Dominic Ingo, I, I mean, I, I, listen, man, it's not about he and I. It's about the two fighters. He said it. I'm not fighting and you're not fighting. But then I said, Unless they saw the boxing coaches, boxing league, then we can get it all. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's okay, man. Nah, it's, it's, it was, it's all in good fun. It wasn't like, I was serious when I was up there. But, I mean, it's over, man. Oh, come on, man. You hold on to that stuff. <laughs> all right, listen, Derek, thank you very much for talking to Eiffel TV. And uh, best of luck in your camp with, um, with Errol. And uh, we'll catch you again soon when you return to the UK. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, man. I'm left-handed because I'm ho holding the camera. Okay, okay. Top man. Thank you, day man.